The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the member for Karangamite. I rise to commend the Closing the Gap report, to commend the work of our government and to commend the work of the previous government. Today I want to focus on the positives. What we are doing together on both sides of politics to close the gap. We've heard this morning, yes, there, are, there is some disagreement, but what we need to focus on and what I'm going to focus on is that we, as a nation, are embracing the very hard work that lies ahead in closing the gap. As we heard yesterday, two very fine speeches from the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. Um, for the Prime Minister, this is personal. The Prime Minister has brought Indigenous Affairs into his department. He has a deep commitment. He has a passion. He has appointed a Parliamentary Secretary in Alan Tudge, responsible for Indigenous Affairs, working alongside Minister Scullion. So for the Prime Minister, for our government, uh, there is a deep and a very strong commitment to closing the gap. Mr Deputy Speaker, for me, this is also personal. And I think for each of us, we've had our own journey embracing the many challenges and the way in which Indigenous Australia has been disenfranchised and damaged in the past. And I guess for me, my journey began in the early 1990s when I was studying law and was given an assignment to do about terra nullius at a time when I didn't know what terra nullius was. It was before Mabo was handed down. And it was an extraordinary eye-opener to me as to what our first Australians had endured, how they had lost their lands, the gross injustice. <coughs> I remember in the, uh, the mid-90s, I, uh, I was a radio host working for 3AW in Melbourne, and I was quite passionate about Indigenous affairs, about reconciliation. And the, one of the managers called me in and he said, look, Sarah, we're not sure that you're connecting with our audience. We want you to talk more about you know, the cost of broccoli and, and uh, you know, other matters that you know, connect with the people listening to your show. And I said, this is so important. Uh, this is so incredibly important and I think in the last uh, 20 or so years as a nation uh, we are on a, a positive journey and more and more people have joined that journey. <clears throat> I was very proud in the uh, mid-1990s when my mother was appointed the Victorian Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. During her term she led the apology on behalf of the people of Victoria to the Stolen Generation. I worked for an organisation called National Indigenous TV. Um, this was an incredible time for me. It gave me such an important education into the significance of opportunity. Um, NITV was all about giving young Indigenous men and women the opportunity to do great things, to work, to tell their stories. During that time in, in and there was a particular day that I will never forget, and it was the day of the National Apology. It was a magnificent day, and it was a magnificent credit to the former Prime Minister Rudd. Um, there were tears flowing in the offices of National Indigenous TV. Um, for me, it was overwhelming watching these faces. And uh, I was very proud to call myself an Australian on that day. At the same time when I travelled to Alice Springs as part of my work, it was distressing beyond belief to see two and three-year-old children walking down the main street in the Mall in Alice Springs, following their mothers and their fathers who could barely walk because of the amount of alcohol they had consumed. There was a profound issue with neglect of the children and it really I found it very, very difficult to look at and to watch. And I think as a nation we have made some very hard decisions about alcohol in Indigenous communities. I know the intervention has been very difficult for some Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but I strongly support the work of the previous government 
and this government in addressing what is a critically important issue for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I am particularly proud of our commitment, and it is a bipartisan commitment, to recognise the first Australians in our constitution. There is very significant work going on at the moment to progress that. And uh, again, I remind the House about how significant it is that the Prime Minister is leading the charge in the recognition of first Australians in our constitution. I do want to remind the House also that we have some very strong commitments to Indigenous affairs. We are honouring our key election commitments and they include moving the administration of more than 150 Indigenous programs and services from eight different government departments into the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, establishing the Prime Minister's Indigenous Advisory Council, implementing the $28.4 million remote school attendance strategy, commissioning a review of Indigenous employment and training programs, uh, providing $45 million to fast track the implementation of a demand-driven vocational training and employment centres training model providing $5 million to support the design of the Empowered Communities Initiative and working to build support for a successful referendum to recognise the first Australians in our constitution, as I have mentioned. We have made some good progress in closing the gap. Child mortality rates, access to early education. But of course, we have a long way to go, particularly in areas such as in halving the employment gap within a decade where there has been so far little progress. And that's why our decision to end the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous school attendance and to see 90 per cent of attendance regardless of the percentage of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students is so significant. We recognise, Mr Deputy Speaker, that education is fundamental to opportunity, to closing the gap. If young Aboriginal children are not at school, they are not receiving an education. And uh, I was very pleased to see again the bipartisan approach on this additional target announced by the Prime Minister yesterday. A good education for children in Indigenous communities gives them great capacity to seek employment in the future. I have seen firsthand at NITV what a good education, what opportunity can lead to. Education is very much the future and I think this renewed vigour, this renewed energy to targeting truancy, to making parents accountable, to ensuring that children of Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander descent have every opportunity to learn, to be inspired to learn, to prosper to go to university and to be the best that they can be. More work needs to be done. I'm very proud to be part of a government that is so focused on closing the gap. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I commend this report to the House.